What is good, people? Zensphere back again with another Renoise tutorial. And today we are going to be exploring the CDP interface tool for Renoise. This is an extremely powerful suite of digital signal processes uh, that you can use to transform audio in almost unimaginable ways. Um, before we get much further, I'll just give you some examples of the kinds of sounds that you can yield from this tool. Uh, here's our dry sample. Oh. And here are some various uh, affected versions of the sample. So as you can hear, you can achieve some really interesting results. Um, there are something like 800 different processes uh, available to you through this tool. Um, so this is only really scratching the surface. Um, uh, I think I'll maybe I'll just play you some a few other examples. Uh, this is it's really powerful on uh, transforming speech. Let's see if I can find kind of the original sample. We we are the, the computer simulation of an alien intelligence. That is the God that has created us. Um, so that's the original, and let's listen to some various affected forms. We are the, 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 the computer simulation of an alien intelligence. That is the God that has created us. This one's like a ambient piece on its own. Some pretty cool stuff. Um, really interesting sound design potential. Um, so let's take a look at this tool and how it works um, and uh, how you can incorporate it into your workflow. Um, so let's just start out by loading up a sample. Uh, we need something with a little bit of length to it. Um, let's maybe choose a symbol. Uh, let's just get a crash, um, crash symbol. Let's try this jam. That one sounds decent. It's got some decent uh, sustain. And I'm just going to trim this down. And before we begin, I'm just going to duplicate this sample several times so that we have uh, a number of iterations to work with. We'll go to key zones and I'll set up a drum kit. I've got a hot key for that. Um, and now we can play these on successive notes on the keyboard. So um, we'll bring up the uh, CDP tool. I've got it bound to a hotkey, but um, it's just here in the tool browser, CDP interface. 
And uh, it brings up this window where we have access to all of the different processes uh, that come with the CDP um, set of programs. Uh, I suppose I should just explain what CDP is. It stands for the Composer's Desktop Project. And this is a project that has been in development for, I think, over 20 years. Uh, it's, it's kind of an old set of uh, processes that were developed in um, academic computer music composing circles, uh, primarily by a guy named Trevor Wishart, um, although I believe it was uh, a team effort. Um, his music is really interesting and worth checking out if you um, like to hear how sound can be transformed and um, composed in, in really interesting ways. Uh, but in any case, uh, CDP, it's, it's a library of processes. It's available for free. Um, and there are a couple uh, free kind of front ends um, for utilizing the processes. And uh, a couple Renoise users, uh, I believe it's AFTA8 and uh, Jonas the Plug Expert developed this tool uh, a number of years back to act as a front end for the CDP processes within Renoise. Now, it can be a little bit of a bear to get installed in your system properly because you have to download the CDP processes separately and make sure that the tool is pointing to the correct path. And depending on your operating system, this may be a little bit complex. Uh, it took me some time to figure out how to install it, but I can tell you it is well worth the effort and uh, the documentation within the CDP downloads uh, themselves, there's like a manual configuration PDF, um, explains how to, how to do what you need to do. And then once you've downloaded the CDP interface tool for Renoise, you can just kind of point the tool in the right direction. Uh, so assuming you have that done, um, this uh, EXE filter will bring up a variety of different processes that you can use. Um, and there are a ton of them here. I've only been messing with this tool for a week or so, so I'm, I'm definitely not uh, an expert on what all of these do. Uh, but you can see under some categories, like for instance, blur, there are actually all kinds of different blur processes that you can access. Um, <clears throat> so let's, uh, let's take a look at some of uh, the more interesting processes, at least that I've found, and how to use them in the context of this tool to create some interesting sounds. So we've got our splash symbol here. Let's just try blur, blurring it first. So let's do uh, blur blur, which is a time average of the spectrum. And you can see here, there's this little window that uh, gives you the information uh, about how the process works. If you hit this question mark, it will take you to the um, CDP function reference in a browser. And thankfully, uh, there are tool tips um, for pretty much all of these windows. Right? So there's useful information if you hover your mouse over um, all the windows and the processes. And you'll see as we get into the different processes, there can be lots and lots of different options. Um, so for this one, let's just uh, leave it at 512 and we'll see if it works. Okay, so that, <laughs> you can see there's a little bit of audio data there, uh, but it really blurred it. So let's um, hit undo. There's a lot of hitting undo with this tool because uh, some things work, some things don't. Let's try bringing this down to 128 and see what we get. Let's hit process again. Okay, so now we have a different sound. And you can hear we have a blurred version of it. I'm just gonna normalize it. And there are a few artifacts here which you could clean up either manually or by uh, you know, just uh, fading it in. And so we have this interesting kind of stretched, time stretched, blurred uh, spectrum um, symbol crash. Now let's try processing it again and again. And you can see that the uh, harmonics start to bleed into each other more and more so that it becomes something pretty different from where it started. And to my ears, that's kind of an interesting sound. Might benefit from some time stretching within Renoise. So let's uh, just do that and let's bump this up to, oh, let's somewhere around there. 
little, let's go further. Let's take this to 256. Some old school Aphex Twin vibes. Um, but yeah, you can see that's just with one process using this blur blur time averaging of the spectrum. So let's check out um, Blur Drunk. This is an interesting one as well. So this process can be used to lurch about in a sound file, producing a jumbled version of the in file to varying degrees. Um, so now if I just hit process, it's probably going to throw up an error message. Um, well, actually, it didn't. And once you get used to using this tool, you will become comfortable with error messages. And a lot of the error messages that come up in this window are actually really useful. They'll, they'll give you some information that uh, shows you how to tweak the parameters so that you can use the uh, process effectively. Um, so let's uh, bring the range down, start time duration. Let's shorten the duration. And I forget what Z does, let's see. Um, if we hover here, it says eliminate zero steps, window repeats in the drunken walk. We don't need to do that. So let's just try this again. So you can imagine how with a different waveform, say we were using this on, on speech. Let me just pull up a speech sample here. Uh, if I know how to navigate my um, browser some speech here let's uh let's pull up um old terence mckenna here and we'll just take a snippet and sometimes you do have to close this because you can see that um, it doesn't necessarily recognize the new instrument as it happened we have to kind of close it down and then uh, open it back up again and as i said i have it uh tied to a hotkey and then you can see the input and output are already on uh, what we want it to be on. So let's go back to Blur, Blur Drunk and uh, change our range and our start time and our duration. Let's shorten it up a little bit and let's see what happens if we process this. <laughs> That's kind of fun, right? And if you iterate it a number of times, it becomes almost like this granular uh, texture or tone. Okay. Um, so that's uh, just a couple of the processes. And there are some really, really interesting processes in here. Let's, uh, let's check out distort. Um, there are a whole different variety of uh, distort um, algorithms. Uh, you can do harmonic distortion, you can do interpolation distortion, you can um, do fractal distortion. Um, and it, it kind of explains what all these different uh, distortion methods do. Um, so like this one performs a mathematical averaging of the data in the cycle count pseudo wave cycles. Um, <clears throat> so you can change the cycle count and you can also change some of these other parameters. But let's just hear what it sounds like here. <laughs> it's pretty interesting, right? So let's go back and... I mean, it wants to show you so that's the uh, the original. And then let's change the cycle count. As we bring this cycle count up, it should uh, kind of smooth it out. It makes it more harmonic. Really interesting transformation of the source material. So, you know, if you wanted, you could have an entire piece of music where all the sounds were derived from, say, like one sample. And it can be really interesting and different and compelling and yet somehow cohesive because it's all derived from the same uh, source material. Um, let's uh, return this back and we'll go even further with our cycle count. See if it throws up an error message. Now we just have this melodic uh, sequence. Really interesting. Um, a lot of these processes will kind of um, fuck with your gain. Uh, so you got to regain things, renormalize things. Sometimes you need to bring the gain down before you run the process or else it will distort. Um, so pay attention to any error messages thrown or gain messages thrown in the window here. Uh, I just want to do this one more time. Let's try it with a really low uh, cycle count and see what that sounds like. Kind of cool distortion. I'd be curious to know what that would sound like on some... Uh, Oh, maybe some kick drums or some toms or something like that. 
Um, so let's uh, let's explore some more uh, of these interesting processes. Uh, we're going to go back to our splash sim uh, symbol sound. And I'm closing out CDP and opening it up again just so it'll focus on the sound that we want. Um, so let's find a freshie here. We've got a freshie and if you had taken the time to kind of like rename all these, uh, it would come up here and it would be a little easier to keep track of. But what we're gonna do is just go to the third one because that's what we're on. Third one is our output file. And let's check out a different process. Um, uh, oh, you know what? Actually, let's let's go back to McKenna and let's keep doing some distortion because there are a whole bunch of other really interesting distortions here. Let's undo this. Get back I mean, to our it original wants sample. to show you. Uh, open up CDP. Go to distort. And let's look at. Uh, the fractal distortion is pretty interesting, but uh, this is a very complex waveform, so I think that it's maybe not going to be um, quite what we want. But let's look at the interpolation distortion. Um, this is an interesting one. So again, you know, there's a, an explanation here, and you can go through and read the explanation. Some of them are quite lengthy. If you want to read it in an easier to read format, hit the question mark, and it'll open it up in a web browser. Um, so let's just try and process this and see if it works. I fucking love it. It's so unusual. Okay, you can take chops of this and use it as like a percussion element. <laughs> it's great. It's great. It's great. Um, so let's uh, try a different multiplier and see what that sounds like. Oh, so nasty. I love it. I love it. I love it. Um, so, yeah, this uh, interpolation distortion is really interesting. Uh, this pitch warp distortion is really cool, too. Um, let me just take this back to the dry signal. I mean, it won. And let's check out pitch warp. Distort pitch. Um, and let's just try it on these initial settings. Wild, you know, so it's like this extreme pitch modulation. Um, let's take it back and let's bump this up. Try it again. So you could like mine this mud pie for kick sounds. You know, if you take some of these uh, high frequency sections that transition to low frequency sections, clip that or clip that out and reverse it, uh, you could get yourself a really unique and uh, interesting sounding kick drum uh, really easily. So you can see the applications are uh, pretty limitless. I mean, it wants to show you. <laughs> I really like this one. That's just so cool. Uh, let's check out the uh, fractal distortion too. Um, although again, it might not sound so great. So you'll run into a lot of, there's a lot of trial and error with this tool and you will get lots of error messages. We haven't had any thrown up yet, but uh, I'm sure that we will before too long here. Um, and let's just try this here. <laughs> And you can see our gain just bumped up quite a bit. Um, so we're getting some clipping. But if we go back, uh, we have a loudness um, dial here. We can just bring it down and hopefully that'll take care of it. Let's check it out better. So the thing probably to do is to attenuate this. Um, before we process it. And then let's process it. So that's some fractal distortion. Let's scale it up. Okay, so here's our error message. It says an output, output file was not produced. Check your settings. So when it says check your settings, um, look in this box. And usually there's some useful information. It says errors. Source sound too short to attempt this process. So that just means we need to dial our scaling back because we don't have enough audio, audio information here to, to run it at that level of scaling. Let's see if we can get away with 1963. 
Interesting. So it takes a window, uh, a time average window, and then it applies the shape of that waveform to the waveform itself. So that's why it's called a fractal distortion. So you can hear how the character of the distortion changes throughout the uh, uh, sample uh, based on what's going on in the sample. Pretty interesting. Uh, another good one to uh, experiment with. Uh, this envelope new can be interesting. You can do just like an exponential decay. This is kind of basically just a fade out. Uh, this peak chop is pretty cool. Um, so let's see what happens if we just run it. Not that interesting. Um, but if we, let's see, let's try increasing our window size. Oh no, let's decrease our window size, increase our peak width and increase our tempo and see what happens. And we'll bring the gain down a little bit. See what happens here. Had some interesting phasing. Um, let's decrease our tempo a little bit here. Kind of interesting. So again, there's a lot of experimentation, a lot of trial and error. You can get very, very different results depending on uh, how your parameters are set. Pretty cool. Um, so let's take this file and I'm just gonna duplicate this. I like this one. Um, we'll duplicate it, go back to key zones, do a drum kit. So we've got them on separate keys, go back to waveform. And I'm gonna close this out and open it up again. And this time, let's check out, um, there's so many great processes here. This uh, fast convolution is really cool. Uh, basically, you can convolve signals against each other. Um, you can convolve signals um, against themselves. Um, this, I can tell already this one's going to be too loud. So let me bring the uh, volume down a little here. And <clears throat> we'll just convolve it against itself and see what it sounds like. Instant dark ambient textures. Awesome. Awesome. Slap a little reverb on there and you're golden. Maybe time stretch it. Very cool. Very cool. So this fast convolution is very interesting one. It's a, a simple process. And if you set it up, you know, correctly to start, um, then you can get some good results pretty easily with that. Um, so let's try this. There's another really interesting, there's so many good processes in this thing. You really just have to like uh, explore and uh, experiment. Um, there are uh, a lot of like text file inputs and outputs. Um, you can analyze data using some of these processes and input data via text files. Um, that, a lot of that is kind of beyond my ken with this tool at this point, but I'd like to figure out how to do that. And you can get very precise about uh, different compositional processes. Um, yeah, I haven't really screwed with a lot of these. Flutter, I think, is cool. Fracture is cool. Um, but what I wanted to show you is highlight. Um, this highlight arpeggio is really interesting. Uh, it's a basically a, a spectrum sweeping arpeggio. Uh, we're gonna need to turn the rate down, I'm sure. And this is two, no, let's see, this is a sine wave. This wave shape is the shape. So there's down ramp, sine, saw, and up ramp. So we're at sine wave now, we'll leave it at that. And let's just try it with the, the rate here and see what it sounds like. Pretty cool. We're getting some clipping, but interesting kind of like liquid, watery effects. Um, I'm going to go back and see if I can, um, we'll just attenuate the amplitude a little bit here. And let's try processing it again. Yeah, 
I love it. So this might need, you know, some further processing, maybe some compression or limiting just to deal with those peaks. Um, I bet if you pitch this down, it would sound really interesting. So let's try that. A little quiet at that octave. Let's bring it up an octave. Pretty cool. Um, I'm going to try this at a different rate. Let's see, what am I doing here? Well, this is just going through this. Okay, so what we'll do is we'll just duplicate this again and we'll bring it here, go back to key zones, do our drum kit, and go back to waveform, make sure we're on the last one. Oh, we're gonna have to close it out because it doesn't, doesn't recognize uh, new samples all the time. Sometimes it does, it seems like, but sometimes it doesn't. So we'll go back to highlights, highlight arpeggio. And you can see, again, there are all these different all these different processes. So you can spend a lot of time uh, getting familiar with how these different things work. Um, we'll leave this on sine wave, we'll bring our rate down. I wanna bring the rate down slower and see uh, what this sounds like. Still pretty similar. Let me undo that and we're gonna bring this rate down real slow, let's try two. So now you can hear those filter sweeps. And it's giving us a warning about our gain processing. We need to bring our gain down. So let's go back, bring the gain down, and let's change our rate. This is too slow, I think. Let's try eight. And I believe this is cycles per second. Try processing it. And let's normalize it. And I'm going to bring up the batch process tool and we'll just up the contrast a little bit here. So this kind of cool rhythmic sequence, it's maybe not the best, but kind of interesting. But you can hear we've created some interesting sounds. Um, let's go back to our splash symbol. And let's, let's check out another process here. We'll do one or two more. There, as you can tell, there's, <laughs> there's really so much you can get into with this. Um, but let's see, there was one that I thought was really interesting. Um, what was it? Let's see if we can find out. I think it was strange. Um, you can do some interesting reverb effects with this uh, software as well with this tool. Um, was it Spect Window, Spec Sphinx? I feel like it was strange. Stretch is cool. You can do harmonic stretching of material. Um, let's check out the shepherd tones here. Okay, we're getting an error format parameter missing on command line. So we have to uh, operationalize one of those. You should reduce source level, gain of 0.4. Okay, so let's undo that. Bring our gain down and then process. <laughs> yeah, I love it. Um, so yeah, this is really, really just scratching the surface, um, but you can tell that there's so much potential here. Um, so I'd encourage anyone, you know, with an interest in sound design um, or just odd sounds in general, try to get the CDP interface working with Renoise. Uh, it's great because it's, you know, it's all sample based. It's all offline processing, um, which is what it is. 
but you know, Renoise being basically a giant sampler, uh, it's a perfect way to generate a whole bunch of interesting source material um, for you know further post processing or rhythmic elements or you name it. I mean, you can you can treat harmonic material with a lot of these tools and get very interesting and different results. Um, there's just so, so much potential in this tool um, that it's, even though it's kind of academic and uh, abstruse and arcane, uh, it's well worth whatever time you invest into it. So I highly encourage you to check it out, see if you can get it running with your system. Um, read the um, read the forum thread on the CDP interface tool. Um, there's some useful information in there. Uh, if you're running into installation issues, um, read the CDP uh, manual configuration PDF. Uh, there's useful information in there, I think for just Mac and Windows. I'm not sure about Linux. Um, but uh, again, it's, it's well, well worth the effort in trying to get this up and running because there's nothing else that sounds like this. You know, I mean, you can you can do very interesting things with sound uh, using these tools. So um, that's what I got for you guys today. I hope, uh, hope this was helpful or interesting or enlightening. And uh, go out there and make lots of music. We will see you next time. Peace.